Hello everyone, I'm Pacific the Casual Gamer and welcome back to another video on, well, Oblivion Builds. And today, I want to tell you guys about a build that, um, someone said something and I just decided to come up with it. I call it the Smash and Shank build. Um, it's a character that uses both a hammer and a dagger at the same time. So I really, the race to me is like, I would assume a red guard, it kind of feels like the right race to use. And he's the warrior sign, because, well, you're freaking stabbing people and hammering them. And then you're going to have combat focus, because you're a combat class. Then your two skills are going to be strength and agility. So, for your seven skills, you're going to have blunt, blade, sneak, heavy armor, restoration, armorer, and acrobatics. So, this character also, by the way, I don't know if you figured it out yet, but they're going to be using a hammer, like a war hammer, and a dagger, because daggers are cool. You use a long sword, short sword. I would prefer a dagger for this build just to make it that much more interesting. So what you're gonna do is it's a mix between a stealth build and uh, a guy with a hammer. It's really what it is, what it comes down to. You're gonna pick your targets and then use your sneak skill and acrobatics to get to them and shank them with the dagger. And then you can use your acrobatic skill to run away from them, or if you want to swap agility with speed, because uh, agility helps with sneaking. That's a bit important to get that bonus off, but if you want to switch, swap it with speed so that you can run away, pretty good. So you shank them from the back, then you swap to your hammer and beat them up with the hammer. That's really what you're going to do. Now, I kind of like, you know, it's not, it doesn't seem very practical to use two combat styles in Oblivion, you know, and it really isn't because. You know, if, if you're getting good with swords, you should probably keep using swords so that all your swords do more damage, right? But this isn't really a build for beating the game on the hardest difficulty. This is just an interesting build for some different types of gameplay. So, you're going to have your heavy armor because as soon as you shank them, you're going to have heavy armor and restoration help you with this. You're also going to be a tank. You're going to be tanking shots all day, all day, all day. Okay. Now these, this like, you're going to tank shots, kill them. Sneak, do your thing. Acrobatics is there as a safety in case you need to jump away to high places. I've kind of developed this thing that I really like to do now, where if I'm getting beat up, I'll run away and jump away, jump onto high places, do my thing, you know, with that, that jumping skill. Armor is there because you're going to have heavy armor, two sets of weapons, you got to keep it up to repair. So this character, even with the heavy armor, one of the problems you're going to run into early in the game is sneaking around because you got heavy armor on. So what you should do is when your sneak is low, put your boots on a hotkey, hotkey them, and then take them off when you're sneaking and quickly put them on when you initiate combat. That way you don't get penalized from the boots, you know, you can just chill, sneak around, then when it's combat time you can put on your boots. Eventually you won't have to worry about this, but for now you got to worry about that and definitely use acrobatics to your advantage because if you're gonna have it as a major skill you might as well use it and I mean that's really it for this build is pretty simple um, I could see this guy definitely being really good for raiding a bunch of dungeons maybe like maybe not so much the mages guild because you have two combat stats and if you fight mages with high protect like a protect spell it's not gonna help very well um, your high sneak skill though and if you bump up agility, you could be a thief. Or an assassin, for that matter. So that's kind of where I'd focus this guy, and of course the Fighter's Guild. But definitely Mage's Guild, a little, di little difficult to use this guy on. But definitely for dungeons, you know, because you can solve your problems many different ways. If you have a single target, assassinate them, so you deal with them faster. And then you don't got to use that many repair hammers. If you have a bunch of targets, use the hammer. What I did notice about the hammer is the hammer has a lot of range like the claymore. Use that range to your advantage when you're using the hammer. Like, I didn't realize this, but the hammer and the mace both have longer ranges than I thought they did. Or, I mean, you could use a axe, two-handed axe, but the hammer and the mace, they got some range behind them. Use that range to your advantage because that's gonna keep you safe and that's gonna make it so you already have a tank that doesn't need a tank as many shots because you're far away and can beat up people. Uh, low magic on this also, I forgot to mention, this class is extremely low magic, like, restoration's there for skill buffs or healing. So that's really it, I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did leave a like, if you want to see something to be a build, suggest those builds in the comments below. I'm Pacific the Casual Gamer, I suck just as bad as you do at video games, 
and I'll see you next episode, stream, vlog, or steam it post, uh, whatever I decide to make.